Good evening, welcome to the May 7th Clifton Park Town Board meeting. Please join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, Yes, communications and announcements. Um, I will uh, just quickly thank everybody that uh, volunteered for our shredding day here in the spring. Uh, every year we have two shredding days and people, uh, we always get hundreds of cars that come through uh, on a Sunday afternoon uh, from 1 to 3, so a fairly short time frame, but uh, a lot of folks do show up for the service. They, um, they have their sensitive documents uh, shredded in a professional and safe manner, and in exchange we ask for some food donations for the Jonesville Food Pantry. So twice a year, we're able to collect uh, over a thousand pounds of food for Jonesville. So we want to thank uh, 3N Document Destruction uh, for not only providing that service on site uh, each uh, each time, but uh, also delivering the three huge uh, containers of food uh, to the Jonesville Pantry, which we did last Thursday. So uh, I want to thank everybody for their donations, and thank you to 3N. If you missed it uh, this time, we'll be back in the fall. So uh, save up your, uh, it'll be after tax day, so you can save up your tax, tax returns and any other sensitive documents that you have. I uh, also want to thank uh, Councilwoman Standart uh, for uh, coordinating the details of our townwide um, cleanup day. And over 400 volunteers again. Uh, this year, cleaning up uh, uh, many parks and trails throughout the town. So, uh, I want to thank all the volunteers for their hard work, and it was another successful, uh, successful day. So, uh, it was a busy, uh, busy month in April. Got a lot done, right? All right? And much more to come. Okay. So uh, we do, if there are no other communications and announcements, we'll move forward. We've got a few presentations tonight. Uh, the first will be our uh, 2018 Historic Preservation Annual Award. And I'm going to hand it over to our liaison, Mr. Whalen. Well, thank you, Supervisor Barrett. So each year, the Historic Preservation Commission presents an annual award or awards to a uh, deserving homeowner or a group and this year the Commission has decided to, uh, certainly I think appropriate, to award the Historic Preservation Award to the Friends of Groom's Tavern. And I want to thank uh, all of our Commission members. We have Gail Winters and Maureen O'Connor here with us. Maureen has been on the Commission a few years now, I think about, probably about five. And Gail, long since before May. So. <laughs> so, and we certainly appreciate all of your efforts. It's a volunteer commission. They spend countless hours uh, visiting ha uh, houses, meeting with homeowners, educating the community. Uh, volunteers have put in a tremendous amount of effort year after year, uh, many long-time members of the Commission, and uh, it's really been eye-opening to me to, to realize the hard work that goes into what the Commission does. So thank you for everything that you do. Uh, and certainly, thank you to the friends of Historic Coon Tavern uh, as well. Larry, I think you're the chairman this year, the chairperson, excuse me, uh, of uh, the friends this year. So I want to thank Larry and uh, Isabel uh, for all of your work, and thank Happy here as well. Thank you again for everything that you do. Uh, so, Larry, you able to come up for a picture for a presentation of the uh, award? And I know you're going to say a few words. <laughs> so, Larry Sisdek, the uh, chairman of Historic, the Friends of Room Seven. Thank you very much for everything that. Uh, that you've done, the Friends have done for approximately the last 20 years. Uh, I know you're going to talk about everything that the Friends have done, and thank you for, for everything that you've done. All right. Thank you. I'll put it down for you. <laughs> <laughs> 
Now, um, you're all welcome to join the Friends of Historic Rooms Tavern. We have brought membership two seats for you to fill out, but you can always come to the tavern and do that and become members. I'm honored to receive this award on behalf of the Friends of the Historic Rooms Tavern, its board, and its membership. Much work has been accomplished by the Friends for over 20 years. Oh, the mic. Yeah, sure. yeah maybe we'll put that on Larry. <laughs> All right. Maybe you don't have to strain as much. Okay. Thank you. Um, I'm honored to receive this award on behalf of the Friends of Historic Rooms Tavern, its board, and its membership. Much of the work, much work has been accomplished by the Friends over the 20 years since they were established. Recently, the Friends, with the help of the town, has made it possible to restore the community room on the second floor. This is now available for historic exhibits, and if you get a chance to get over to the tavern, make sure you go upstairs. Presently, the Friends are working to restore the remainder of the second floor to complete the tavern's restoration. This work on developing Groom's Tavern has resulted in making the tavern a favorite place for public events and meetings. The Friends are also continuing to raise money to restore the blacksmith shop next door to the tavern. This historic building requires restoration and it could, as soon as it can be possibly done. The restoration of the blacksmith shop will make it possible to host larger groups for educated for educational exhibits and activities. Now, Clifton Park has grown into a city-sized community since the 1950s, from a small community of farms to a bedroom community to the capital region and to its present large population. As it grows larger, it must remember its heritage and its rich history. How better to do that than by preserving its historic buildings? On behalf of the Friends of the Historic Room Tavern, I wish to thank the Historic Preservation Commission for this award and for their continued work on preserving our historic heritage. Thank you. And the, uh, the Friends of Groom's Tavern as a group has uh, invested a tremendous amount of time in the restoration, planning, and execution um, over the uh, over the last couple of decades, and the uh, final product and the result is uh, a wonderful <laughs> community building, wonder wonderful cultural center as well. And uh, we uh, we appreciate your partnership uh, through the years, and uh, I expect we'll continue to work together for many more uh, as we uh, further the efforts and the goals that Larry just uh, laid out for us in his uh, speech. Thank you. Yeah, one thing I just, if I could add to that, the, uh, I, I communicate with Larry and uh, other members of the Friends on, on a regular basis. Uh, they care a great deal about Grimm's Tavern, and they put their money where their mouth is. I mean, they, they've donated money, contributed money to the town over the years. They continue to fundraise uh, to support the building, and, and I think it's a very good partnership that the town, the commission, and the Friends really have looking after Grimm's Tavern, continuing to improve the building and making sure that it's a valuable resource uh, here in town. So thank you both to the friends and certainly to the commission as well. Thank you. <coughs> Very good. Uh, and we also... Um, do you want to do the... the black? Sure, do you want to do that now? Or yeah, do you want to wait? It's up to you. Yeah, we'll do okay. Yeah. Okay. Yes, please. Um, we'll run a roll here. Uh, Pat's going to uh, read a resolution. And we'll make another presentation. And this is resolution number 109 of 2018, a resolution designating the John and Maria Peck House to be placed on the Clifton Park Town Register of Historic Places. Whereas the Historic Preservation Commission has recommended that the John and Maria Peck House, 716 Clifton Park Center Road, Clifton Park, be added to the Town Register of Historic Places. And whereas the Peck House may have been built as early as 1830 by John and Maria Peck, about the time when they were married, and whereas the town has been occupied by se several generations of Pecks, including John Peck, who served as town councilman from 1960 to 1963, and as superintendent of highways from 1967 to 1977, and his wife, Mildred Peck, former town clerk from 1980 to 1991, 
and where structures placed on this register will be given historic status for purposes of town-wide recognition, and as such shall be provided with appropriate marker and inclusion in a town brochure, identifying all sites so designated. So now, now therefore, be it resolved that the town board hereby adds the John and Marie and Peck House, 716 Clifton Park Center Road, to the town register of historic places. Very good. I move that we approve the resolution with a second by the board. Council Whalen? Yes. Council Stanard? Yes. Council Whalen? Yes. Council Barrett? Yes. All right. I added another six here? All right. Yep. Yes. Thank you. We've got a nice heavy plaque for you. That's all right. I'm not too heavy. <laughs> <laughs> we can help you with... Uh, so for those of you who aren't aware, when a, when, a ta when a house is added to the historic register, the commission provides a plaque to the homeowners uh, to be added to the house, so it signifies the significance of that property being added to the town's historic register. A uh, number of houses, if, you may not be surprised if you drive around town, the historic houses that we have here that have that plaque uh, added to them. So we appreciate you sharing your house with the community. I drive by almost every single day. Uh, so it's, as I've learned the history from John and the commission, it's uh, really an honor for us to be able to edit through register. So thank you very much for sharing it with the candidate. Thank you. And there's, uh, there's no doubt the Peck name is synonymous with uh, history uh, of Brooklyn Park. And if you are interested in viewing these, these houses and the partnerships that we forge uh, with property owners uh, throughout the town, there is an interactive map on the on our website, WilkinPark.org, where you can uh, see where the houses are located. Uh, they're, they're beautiful structures. Uh, it takes a tremendous amount of time and money invested by the uh, homeowners in these. I surely agree with that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, to, uh, to not only preserve the homes in many cases, uh, but to uh, also ensure that the historical significance of the structure is maintained for many years into the future. So uh, it's certainly a labor of love and, and a big investment. And um, we, we enjoy our partnerships uh, with all of these folks that own these historic structures. As Larry said, uh, it's very important. As the town grew from maybe 6,000 people, a little over 6,000 in 1960, uh, to 37,000 people now, uh, it's important that we remember where we came from as well. Is there anything to do with this? Well, we just thought it was really important. We were afraid that the, the, damp, the house was going to go to a developer, mm -hmm. and so it had been vacant for three years after my Aunt Miller passed away, and so we thought it was important to keep it in the family. Fantastic. Well, we're glad you did. <laughs> we are too. <laughs> 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 Thank you. I gotta thank John Shear for being very, very adamant about doing this and uh it's a great place. Well, I was gonna ask John to say a few words as he yeah. often does, talking about the history of the house. Every time we had a did I come to the catch up card? <laughs> well, we can sit down, but one thing I did want to mention too, talking about the labor of love that the commission uh, is involved with in this. Too, this is a process that takes months or sometimes even a few years to educate homeowners of what the historic register is about. John or other members of the commission are aware of the house. They have conversations with the homeowner. Again, educate them as far as what this means. So I think there's sometimes a hesitancy on the part of homeowners because you hear about horror stories in other communities as far as what that means. Uh, the homeowners are kind enough to open up their house to a tour from members of the commission who volunteer their time, uh, take pictures, photograph the house, document the historic <coughs> significance of it. So it's, it, it's, a pro I mean, it's a certainly an involved process that the homeowners and the commission uh, are involved in. So with that being said, again, we appreciate the fact that you're willing to share your house uh, with the community. Thank you. And we'll all be over Sunday for this. <laughs> <laughs> when we say share, we mean share. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much.
Phil started, I thought he was going to say one of the requirements was that would be on the registers you had to open your house to the public. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to add that uh, during the 20th century, the house was owned by the, the Peck family. Uh, Why don't you come up, John? Because you're next anyway. So you can uh, transition right into the annual update. Okay. <laughs> the, uh, uh, the house is owned by... Um, Guy Peck and his wife Mary Schauber during the 20th century and then John Peck and Millie Peck owned it after that and the Pecks were town clerks the whole uh, for generations they were town clerks and they operated out of that house that was the town clerk's office and uh, uh, the Pecks, the Stecks uh, actually have the original town clerk's desk in the house. It's still there in the, in the house and, uh, and other things associated uh, with the uh, uh, town clerk. Of course, you have to remember we didn't have a town hall until 1957, so that's the town clerks operated out of their homes. So I think that's really interesting. Well, so, so did the uh, town offices. Right. That's where they had the right. meetings. That was it. They had the meetings there at the house as well. So it's it's unruly town hall, basically, <laughs> which is preserved. Shall I go into my report? Transition right in, unless there's any questions from the board. Very good. Okay, I, I want to congratulate the friends of Groom's Tavern. They're very deserving of the award, and I'm very pleased that uh, they received it uh, tonight. They've done a lot of hard work there. So, um, this is my report for 2017. Uh, and last year was the bicentennial of the construction of the Erie Canal, uh, which they began construction of it in 1817, and it was completed in 1825. So we've got a long time to celebrate. Uh, but to celebrate this event last year, we did a special exhibit on the Erie Canal, uh, Erie Canal in Clifton Park, which opened last May in the newly restored public room in the Historic Rooms Tavern. Larry alluded to the fact that we were able to get that restored and open it. Uh, the restoration of the public room was a joint effort between the town and Friends of Groom's Tavern, and it provides a wonderful location for special, exhibit, special exhibits or art shows. The canal exhibit opened with a special reception sponsored by the Friends of Groom's Tavern and a PowerPoint presentation, Low Bridge, the Erie Canal in Saratoga County. In September, Portions of the canal exhibit were moved to the Clifton Park Half Moon Library, and the PowerPoint presentation was given as part of the library's very popular Friday morning free-for-all. Uh, I also worked with librarians Tanea Bannon and Gail Winters, who's here tonight, to create a special website on the Erie Canal in Saratoga County, featuring historical photographs from the town history collection. Uh, this is accessible on the library's website, and it's really quite interesting because they've used uh, tapes of oral histories that I collected over the years. One going back to 1975 of this John Wooden, who was actually the la last lock tender uh, at Lock 19 uh, in Fisher Ferry. And so there's bites of sound in this presentation of these people talking firsthand about the canal. So I, I, you get onto the library's website, and I think you go to the local history section, and there's a place you can click on, and you can get all of this. It's really very nice. Uh, I also gave the presentation Low Bridge to the Schenectady Yacht Club in August. The Erie Canal was the focus of a bicycle tour in June to commemorate Trails Day, and a walking tour in September during Farm Fest weekend, both celebrated the completion of the newly constructed and renovated towpath trail in the Fisher Ferry Nature and His Historic Preserve. And incidentally, we're going to uh, reprise that bicycle tour uh, first Sunday in June. So if anybody's interested, it's going to start off at the Groom's Tavern. Uh, an exhibit on the Mohawk Baseball Association, a little league popular in Clifton Park in the 1960s and 1970s, replaced the Erie Canal exhibit at the Tavern in August. It featured the collection of Rex, Rexford resident Pat Connolly. And again, an opening reception was hosted by the Friends of Groom's Tavern, and special invitations went out to those who played on various teams to come and share experiences 
during his special program. It's kind of interesting to, to hear these guys reminisce about playing ball back in the 60s when they were young. Uh, in May, the Historic Rooms Tavern in town of Clifton Park hosted uh, the Historic Rooms Tavern in town of Clifton Park hosted the Region 5 Annual Meeting of the Association of Public Historians of New York State. This group consisted of municipal historians from Saratoga, Washington, Warren, Schenectady, and Albany counties. Lauren Roberts, a Saratoga County historian, and Devin Landers, New York State historian, attended the meeting. And uh, Supervisor Phil Barrett, uh, and board member James Whalen were both on hand to welcome the historians. And I think you probably heard as so much feedback from them as I did about how impressed they were with the uh, Groom's Tavern and what the town was able to do uh, with the building. Uh, in October, I attended the annual conference of the Association of Public Historians in Poughkeepsie. Uh, many tours and presentations were offered throughout the year. Besides the bicycle tour of the Canal Towpath in June, I led a bicycle tour in the center of town in October. We actually rode around the shopping area um, and Clifton Knowles. And Jerry Burr, a member of the Trails Committee, and I work on these rides together. Uh, and the October ride featured the central part of Clifton Park, the school, shopping centers, library, and Clifton Knowles to show people they don't have to get in the car and go to these places. They can go on foot or on bicycle. Um, walking tours of the Vischer Ferry Historic District were given to celebrate Historic Preservation Open Space Day in May and for the patrons of the Vischer Ferry General Store in June. And I'll be doing a walking tour on May 19th again also of, of Vischer Ferry. PowerPoint presentations were given to various organizations. Uh, Crossroads and Canals, A History of Clifton Park was presented to Boy Scout Troop 30 and again at the Groom's Tavern for the town. Clifton Park's Dutch Heritage uh, was also presented at the Groom's Tavern in conjunction with the Dutch holiday of Twelfth Night on January 6th. A workshop using DNA to find ancestry was presented at the Clifton Park Half Moon Library and a presentation on antique furniture was also given at the library. Clifton Park's Waterfront was presented for the Adult Learning Program at Empire State College in Saratoga Springs. Uh, I'm always being asked to be a speaker because I'm cheap. <laughs> um, articles on Clifton Park history were written for the Community News and Clifton Park Neighbors. Uh, the Vanguard Show House, which is a fundraiser for the Albany Symphony, uh, this year for 2017, was a home in Menands that had been moved there in 1953 to make room for the Stony Creek Reservoir. The house had been built in 1813 by Francis Vischer and was completely dismantled, moved, and reconstructed on its new site. This is on Pheasant Lane in Menands. I gave a special presentation on the history of this building at an opening celebration for the Vanguard Show House. And uh, in September, I assisted in organizing a tour of historic houses in and around Ballston Lake, together with the Ballston Lake Improvement Association and Rick Reynolds, fellow historian for the town of Ballston, because we own part of uh, Clifton Park is on part of Ballston Lake, and so we included some interesting uh, sites there. In fact, there, one of the buildings was this uh, camp, an original 1920s period camp that still exists as it did when it was built in the 1920s. And the person who owns it uh, loves it, and they've got it furnished like a 1940s, 1950s era camp. It's great. You'll hear more about this in the future, I'm sure. Uh, Preservation Commission is working on getting that on the register. Um, with the help of some strong young men hired by building and grounds for the summer, we moved some abandoned 19th century tombstones, uh, no longer on their original sites, to the Amity Church Cemetery in Bisher Ferry for preservation. Um, unfortunately, my annual uh, October cemetery tour was canceled due to inclement weather. And we'll try again uh, this year. I actually, it was, it was really pouring, and we knew it was coming, and so we canceled it on Friday. But I went up there Sunday just to see if we showed up. They did. There was quite a crowd oh. <laughs> outside the cemetery waiting. Oh, boy. So, well, anyway, 
it, it seems like anything I do, the rain follows me. We did the bus ride yesterday, and you know what the weather was like yesterday. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so. <clears throat> um, new acquisitions for 2017 include a wonderful collection of 19th century quilts made by members of the Wood and Bloodgood families of Jonesville and donated by Barbara Osborne of West Virginia. She's a descendant of these families. These will be featured in a future exhibit, hopefully at the uh, Groom's Tavern or the library. <laughs> Uh, Ruth Turner, a Garnsey descendant who lives in this unit, has allowed us to copy many original Garnsey records, and she also has a portrait of Nathan Garnsey Jr., who is the second supervisor of our town, and I'm working on that. Uh, I continue to serve as uh, representative to the Mohawk Towpath Byway, and also as advisor to the Historic Preservation Commission. And I do a lot of the research for the history of the houses that are placed on the town's historic register, which actually I enjoy. It's a lot of fun. Historic preservation involves increasingly more time as we attempt to preserve our town's heritage. Although we do win some battles, we also lose some. And it is discouraging to witness the removal and collapse of so many barns, and especially the proposed demolition of the Clifton Park Center Baptist Church which has both state and national significance. Unfortunately, not all share the passion to preserve our historic resources. I continue as advisor to the Friends of Historic Rooms Tavern, who in 2017 hosted a special meeting of representatives from other town organizations to discuss possible uses and restoration goals for the adjacent blacksmith shop in neighboring Grange Hall. In conclusion, I just want to thank the Town Board, uh, Parks and Recreation, Building and Grounds, uh, the Clifton Park Half Moon Library, and the Friends of Groom's Tavern, uh, whose assistance and passion for history is greatly appreciated. Very good. Thank you, Joe. Well, we're making history every day. <laughs> We're making history every day, and the years are getting shorter, right? That's right. But, um, you know, the you, you're right uh, when you discussed how uh, we hosted um, various historians at the uh, Groom's Tavern uh, beginning of 2017, and the uh, the reaction was tremendous. Was. You know, and. You know, we, we have a tendency, we have something in town, no matter what it is, or anything in life, you, you sometimes tend to take it for granted. So we, we're all, you know, we're at the tavern pretty often, and we, we've seen how it has evolved, and we appreciate that, but we know that it's there. And to see other people come in from, from other communities, other historians, and including the state historian, come in from other areas and um, just talk glowingly and, how surprised they were, and pleasantly surprised. Very much so. Uh, very impressed. And very impressed, yeah. And uh, that's uh, very good to see, and uh, furthers our appreciation, I think, for all the work that's been done on the uh, on the facility. The upstairs is coming along very nice, and that's where the first town board meeting was held, upstairs. So uh, I also think we, we should mention, you know, with Friends of Groom's Tavern here tonight getting an award, and uh, Pat Hafner's here, you know, I'd like to remember Ernie Hafner and uh, all of his efforts on behalf of the uh, Groom's Tavern. He spent a lot of time there uh, with John, certainly, uh, over the years, and uh, we remember him and appreciate all of his efforts as well. So it's good to see you, Pat. And also take a look at the garden when it's in bloom. Yeah. Pat has a lot to do with taking okay. care of that garden. Good it's point. It's spectacular. Good point. When it's in bloom. It is. It is gorgeous. That whole courtyard area off to the side and back, uh, just beautiful. So mm -hmm. thank you, Pat, for your efforts. Mm -hmm. Very good. And thank you to everybody on the uh, Historic Preservation Commission. As John said, we don't. Uh, mm -hmm. We don't win every battle. I think that's how you phrased it, John. Um, I don't know if there's anything more you want to say about that particular situation, but uh, you know, over the years we've certainly offered 
any assistance and support that we could as, as a municipality, and I know you have as well as town historian. Yes, I think the town and the Preservation Commission have both bent over backwards to uh, assist them. So. Okay, very good. Um, 2000, uh, well, gee, we're already in the first quarter of 2018, John, so you'll be here in no time. <laughs> the year's already a quarter done. Yeah. So, uh, very good. Oh, yeah, I don't uh, see anybody from, uh, from the house. Well, maybe next week? Oh, okay. Well, if, maybe if they can come next week, we can just give it to them next week. Yeah, well, we can do that. Pat, Pat's going to read uh, another resolution uh, um, recognizing uh, the Elks and Youth Week. This is resolution number 108, 2018, a resolution proclaiming the first week in May 2018 as Youth Week, whereas the Benevolent and Protective Order of Elks has designated May 1st to the 7th as Youth Week to honor Americans. America's junior citizens for their accomplishments and to give fitting recognition of their services to the community, state, and nation. And whereas Clifton Park Elks Lodge 2466 will sponsor an observance during that week in tribute to the junior citizens of this community. And whereas no event could be more deserving of our support and participation than one dedicated to these young people who represent the nation's greatest resource and who in the years ahead will assume the responsibility for the advancement of our free society and whereas our youth need the guidance, inspiration, and encouragement which we alone can give in order to help develop these qualities, those qualities of character essential for future leadership and go forth to serve America. And whereas to achieve this worthy object objective, we should demonstrate our partnership with youth, our understanding of their hopes and aspirations, and a sincere willingness to help prepare them in every way for the responsibilities and opportunities of citizenship. Now, therefore, be resolved that the town board does hereby proclaim the first week in May as Youth Week in Clifton Park and urges all departments of government, civic, fraternal, and patriotic groups and our citizens generally to participate wholeheartedly in its observance. Thank you, Pat. Um, we move that we approve the resolution with a second by the board. Councilman Whalen, yes. Councilman Sandoz, yes. Councilman Romano, yes. Councilman Wallace, yes. and Vice Yes, and we'll be sure the, the Elks uh, receives this um, this resolution. They uh, they do it. I was just there actually at six o'clock. They were having a nice dinner for the Boy Scout troop uh, that is uh, affiliated with the with the uh, Elks Lodge here in Clifton Park. And you know you hear them talk about the Boy Scouts and nationally the numbers are down. And, uh, but boy, in town here, uh, there's, there's several troops uh, that uh, have events on a regular basis, and their numbers seem very strong, and that's, that's very good to see. So at least locally in Clifton Park, the Boy, Boy Scouts seem to be very strong, but a lot of that does have to do not only with the parents and volunteers, but their affiliate organizations, like the Elks and, and the Jonesville Church and the Shenandoah Methodist Church, and uh, and the other organizations that support uh, these Boy Scout groups. So they do a lot for the community and we appreciate it. All right, uh, we do have other resolutions on the docket tonight. Pat, if you could read through those and we'll consider each one individually. A resolution to authorize the town supervisor to execute the attached revocable license agreement with William Lothar for the 2018 farming season. Whereas by resolution number 114, 2013, Town Board authorized the supervisor to enter into a real estate purchase contract with Arnold and Kathleen Carice for the Mooney Carice Forest, and whereas the town acquired the Mooney Carice Forest on May 3, 2013, and whereas the purchase contract with the Carice family contemplated a revocable license on a portion of the property for farming and maintenance purposes, and whereas the Town Board is willing to grant a revocable one-year license to William Wilson to allow for the harvesting of corn and other produce, and for the seasonal brush hogging of the meadow area on the property as shown on Exhibit A of the attached license agreement on terms and conditions specified within the license agreement. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the supervisor is authorized to execute the attached revocable license agreement with William Lothar for the 2018 farming season. The resolution authorizing transfer of funds from contingency to, that line is listed, for the printing of new fire district maps. 
whereas the Emergency Services Advisory Board has requested funds for printing new fire district maps, and whereas numerous district boundary changes have occurred since the last printing in 2002, and whereas Stephen Myers, Director of Building and Development, has recommended that it will benefit the benefit to the town to have updated fire district maps, that it could be resolved that the town board authorizes the transfer of $2,000 from contingency to um, Emergency Services Advisory Board printing. The resolution authorizing change order number two to the contract for the removal and replacement of the lighter to the waiting pool of the Country Knoll Pool to Patterson Stevens Inc. Whereas resolution 247 of 2017 awarded the contract for replacing the pool liner to the Country Knoll's Pool to Patterson Stevens Inc. And whereas the contractor was granted a no, a no cost extension of the completion date until May 21st, 2018, due to long lead times for material and a concern about cold weather affecting the installation at no extra cost to the town. And whereas the contractor has submitted change order number two, reflecting an increase in cost uh, by $16,142 due to failing concrete and mortar found under the old pool liner, and whereas the McDonald Engineering um, has reviewed the costs associated with this change order and advises that the change conditions justified the work associated with the change order and recommends approval. Now, therefore, be resolved that the supervisor is authorized to sign change order number two to increase the total cost of replacing the waiting pool liner by $16,142 for a total amount not to exceed $56,392 to be paid with a transfer of $16,142 from the Long Hill One assigned fund balance and two, and the other fund balance is uh, listed. The resolution appointing Rose Savella as receiver of taxes and assess assessments for the town of the park. Whereas due to the transfer of Christine Pagniello, a vacancy exists in the office of receiver of taxes and assessments. And whereas after interviewing Rose Savella, Bevwood Court the Park Supervisor Bear has recommended Rose Savella, currently of the Comptroller's Department, for the position of receiver of taxes and assessments. And whereas Rose Savallo has been employed as an account clerk in the town's controller's office since September 2016, and whereas Rose's responsibilities for the town have demonstrated the background training, education, experience, commensurate with the duties and responsibilities of receiver of taxes and assessments, now therefore be resolved that Rose Savallo, Bev Wood, Bev Wood Oaks, is appointed to fill the unexpired term of Christine Pagniello, term to expire December 31st, 2018, to become compensated at a grade six step, step one, $26.22 per hour, $27,898 through 2018, to be paid with a transfer, and those lines are listed, effective May 31st, 2018, to further resolve that Rose Savallo is authorized to sign checks drawn, and that Christine Pagnell will be removed as an authorized signer on the accounts of receiver of taxes and assessments for the town of the park. Resolution hiring seasonal lifeguards and head lifeguards <coughs> for the 2018 summer season for Barney Road, Country Knolls, and Walvis Lane Pools. Whereas the town board wishes to hire lifeguards and head lifeguards to maintain a safe environment at the town pools, as well as assist in the management of those pools at Barney Road, Country Knolls, and Walvis Lane Pools. And whereas the supervisor has recommended that the attached list of individuals be hired on the stated start dates as lifeguards and head lifeguards at the, at the attached rates. Now, it will be resolved that the individuals attached shall be hired as lifeguards and head lifeguards for the Barney Road, Oaks Lane, and Country Knoll Pools for the 2018 season to be paid at the rates as attached. A resolution awarding the bid for pool chemicals for the Barney Road, Oaks Lane, and Burning Ridge Pools for the 2018 season. Whereas on May 7, 2018, bids were received for the above reference contract, and whereas the supervisor has recommended that the bid for pool chemicals for the three town pools be awarded to Surpass Chemical Company Inc. of Albany, New York, for the following amounts sodium hypochlorite per gallon, uh, $1.25 <laughs> gallon, carboy, five gallon container, $7 a gallon, muriatic acid per gallon, $3.70 per gallon, muriatic acid, four slash one gallon, $14.00. Eighty cents and drum deposit of eight dollars. Now, therefore, be resolved that the town of the park hereby accepts and awards the above reference bid for, to Sur Sur Surpass Chemical Company Inc., Broadway, Albany, New York, for an estimated cost of fourteen thousand six hundred seventy-seven dollars to be paid as follows: sixty-six hundred and fifty-nine dollars from uh, Barney Road Pool Supplies, thirty-five hundred and sixty-nine dollars from Lopez Lane Pool Supplies. 
and $4,449 from the country knows pool supplies in accordance with the amount used at each pool. Stuff doesn't sound too good, though, does it? No. Uh, <laughs> You're supposed to be putting the acid in the pool. <laughs> Got to clean the pool before we put the water in. Good point. All right. Red the acid's in. Resolution authorizing the highway superintendent to attend the 2018 Association of Towns Highways Forum in New York, whereas Highway Superintendent Dan Bow has requested authorization to attend the 2018 Highway School of Ithaca College in Ithaca, New York, June 4th through the 6th, 2018, at the cost not to exceed $675. And whereas Mr. Bull's attendance to the conference will confer benefit to the town. Now, the appropriate result that Dan Bull was hereby authorized to attend the 2018 Association of Towns Annual Highway School in Ithaca, New York, June 4th through the 6th, 2018, at the cost not to exceed $675 to be paid from Highway Administration training and conferences. A resolution authorizing the Capital Bicycle Race Club to use town roadways for time trials for four evenings in June 2018. Whereas the Capital Bicycle Race Club has requested the use of the town of the park roadways as specified in the attachment here too, for the purpose of time trials to qualify for future races on Wednesdays, June 6th, June 13th, 20th, and 27th, starting at 6 p.m. until the last participant finishes, and whereas Highway Superintendent Dan Bull recommends approval of the club's request to conduct time trials on the roads enumerated, now that will be resolved that the town board hereby authorizes the Capital Bicycle Race Club to use town roadways as specified in the attachment here to Wednesdays in June 2018 at 6 p.m. for the purpose of holding time trials and be it further resolved that this approval is expressly conditioned upon received prior to June 1, 2018 in the office of the town clerk of an insurance certificate in the amount of $1 million naming the town of the park as an additional insured and be further resolved that this approval is expressly conditioned upon the roads not being closed but members of the Capital Bicycle Race Club are committed to raise awareness of the trials at the intersection of Van Branken and Riverview Roads at each end of the course. A resolution appointing Paul Jessup as a member of the Open Space Trails and Riverfront Committee, whereas an opening exists on the, in, on the Open Space Trails and Riverfront Committee, and whereas the town supervisor has recommended that Paul Jessup carry the road with the park filling position, and whereas Mr. Jessup's presence on the Open Space Trails and Riverfront Committee will confer a benefit to the town of the park, and it will be resolved that Paul Jessup is hereby appointed to the Open Space, Riverfront, and Trails Committee term to expire December 31st, 2019. Very good. Any questions on the resolutions? I do want to uh, thank everybody uh, in the town, especially those in uh, public safety departments. We had a very, very busy weekend. Uh, the storm Friday night was short, but packed quite a punch. There was a tremendous amount of damage and power outages across uh, National Grid service area. And although in Clifton Park, the, the number of residents that lost power was very small when compared to the total population, if you're one of them, uh, that power can't come on fast enough and it is very frustrating. So I, I do thank uh, uh, folks that did lose power. Uh, due to the damage uh, for their patients. Uh, to give you an example, up on Wing Road, there were trees blocking the road, but, uh, when, uh, there were, but whenever there's trees down or trees that are compromised and power lines are involved, our personnel cannot touch those trees and cannot remove those trees. We do have to wait for National Grid. Uh, they did deploy um, more and more assets uh, as the weekend uh, went on. Uh, over in Clifton Knowles, there was a, um, a pole that snapped and, a, uh, and, and most of the pole was on the ground. So that obviously cut power to some folks on Par del Rio. Over on Barney Road, the, the, about a fourth, a fourth of the way down, the pole just snapped and it was hanging. You know, the wires still had some tension in them, and the pole was just snapped and hanging there. Uh, so some people over in Barney, Val Valdepinez, over in that area lost power. Uh, so there, there were some of these isolated areas that lost power, and, and I know it was very frustrating, and National G uh, Grid did uh, a good job getting to it, although we'd much rather it happen sooner than later.
But again, and thank you for Highway. Fr Friday night, we had several areas where trees were either in the road or close to, to the road, and they were out clearing those. So, so anyway, busy weekend. Okay, Pat, uh, if you could read the headings, and we'll uh, consider each resolution individually. Resolution number 110 of 2018, a resolution to authorize the town supervisor to execute the attached revocable license agreement with William Moser for the 2018 <coughs> season. This is uh, moved by Mrs. Standard, second by Mr. Whalen. This is part of the property. We added 150 acres or so to uh, Veterans Park in recent years, uh, and this is part of that property. Uh, since we've purchased it, each year we've uh, signed an agreement with uh, Mr. Loser. Uh, he had farmed a small area uh, adjacent to the uh, Carice house uh, for years and um, wanted to continue. And it, it is a good uh, shepherd for, for the property and it also keeps it from being overgrown. So uh, we've continued that practice with him. He provides insurance and um, uh, he has uh, been very involved with the Boston Lake Fire Department for a very long time, and uh, we, we've known him, so we, uh, we do trust his character and his methods. So um, this uh, agreement will continue this practice for another year. Any discussion, questions? Okay. Councilman Whalen? Yes. Councilman Standard? Yes. Councilman Romano? Yes. Councilman Wallowick? Yes. Councilman Wallowick? Yes. Supervisor yes. Bear? Yes. Resolution number 111 of 2018, a resolution authorizing transfer of funds from contingency to um, the ESAB printing line for the printing of new fire district maps. So moved. Second. Moved by Mrs. Standard, second by Ms. Wallowick. Steve? Yeah, the, uh, the maps haven't been reprinted in uh, 14 years. Mm. There's uh, just the boundaries have been moved, and obviously there's been a lot of development in town that don't show on the map yet, so mm. it's, it's needed greatly. Okay, very good. Discussion? Resolution number 110. Yes. 111. 112 of 2018, a resolution authorizing change order number two to the contract to remove or replacement of the liner of the waiting pool at the Country Knolls Pool to Patterson Stevens, Inc. So, second. Moved by Mr. Whalen, second by Mrs. Standart. Uh, this is identified as the waiting pool. Some folks might call it the kiddie pool up at the uh, Country Knolls Pool. Uh, property and it, it has been delayed a little bit uh, mainly due to the uh, cold weather we had hoped to have it done by now and by the way it's going to be in the 30s tonight so <laughs> your, your heat might uh, kick on it's supposed to be anyway as we said so your heat might kick on tonight we'll see. Councilman Whalen? Yes. Councilman Sandark? Yes. Councilman Romano? Yes. Councilman Wallowitz? Yes. Yes. Resolution number 113 of 2018, a resolution appointing Rose Sabalo as a receiver of taxes and assessments for the town of Lincoln Park. So moved. Second. Moved by Mrs. Standard, second by Ms. Wallowit. Uh, Chris Bagnello was recently um, uh, promoted to a uh, deputy clerk position, and she'll be assuming those duties in the coming weeks. Um, obviously, that opened. Uh, Created an opening for the receiver of taxes and assessment position. Uh, we are poised to promote Rose Savalo, who currently works in the controller's office, to the position of receiver of taxes and assessments. She has uh, extensive experience and academic qualifications in the area of accounting, and she's uh, more than qualified to uh, be promoted to this position. So. Uh, we, uh, we always like to promote from within. We've been able to do that uh, twice with these changes in personnel, or changes in position, I should say. Uh, any comments, questions? Okay. Councilman Whalen? Yes. Councilman Standard? Yes. Councilman Mono? Yes. Councilman Wallace? Yes. Supervisor Barrett? Yes. Resolution number 114 of 2018, a resolution hiring seasonal lifeguards and head lifeguards for the 2018 Summer season for the Barney Road, Country Knowles, and Locust Lane Pools. So moved. Second. Moved by Mrs. Standard, second by Mrs. Wallowitz. Yes. Councilman Wallowitz? Yes. Councilman Romano? Yes. Counc
Second. Moved by Mr. Romano, second by Ms. Wallowit. Uh, it is almost pool season. We'll be opening the pools in a couple short weeks here, Memorial Day weekend. Um, also gearing up for the thousands of campers that will host uh, for our full day camp and our half day camps. That'll be starting a little later than that. So uh, going to be another busy summer in the town of Brooklyn Park. Mm -hmm. Councilman Whelan? Yes. Councilman Sandhart? Yes. Councilman Romano? Yes. Councilman Wallowood? Yes. Vice of Eric? Yes. Resolution number 115 of 2018, a resolution awarding a bid for pool chemicals for the Barney Road, Locust Lane, and Burning Bridge pools for the 2018 season. Second. Moved by Mr. Whalen, second by Ms. Wallet. Discussion. Councilman Whalen. Yes. Councilman Sandar. Yes. Councilman Romano. Yes. Councilman Wallowin. Yes. 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 Resolution number 116 of 2018, a resolution authorizing the highway superintendent to attend the 2018 Association of Towns Highway School in Ithaca, New York. So moved. Second. Moved by Mrs. Sandar, second by Ms. Wallowit. Councilman Whalen? Yes. Councilman Romano? Yes. Councilman Wallowit? Yes. Supervisor Baird? Yes. Resolution number 117 of 2018, a resolution authorizing the Capital Bicycle Race Club to use Town Road Race for time trials for four evenings in June 2018. So moved. Second. Moved by Mr. Whalen, second by Mr. Standard. Um, discussion? Okay. Councilman Whelan? Yes. Councilman Sandar? Yes. Councilman Romano? Yes. Councilman Wallowit? Yes. Vice Mayor? Yes. Resolution number 118 of 2018. A resolution appointing Paul Jessup as a member of the Hope Space Trails and the Park Committee. So moved. Second. Moved by Mr. Romano, second by Ms. Wallowit. I want to thank Mr. Jessup. He uh, contacted me recently. He was interested in uh, getting involved uh, on a town committee and working on behalf of the town. Uh, so I uh, met with them, and um, we had an opening on an open space trails and riverfront committee, and he was excited at the opportunity. So we welcome him aboard. Pat? Councilman Whalen. Yes. Councilman Sandor. Yes. Councilman Romano. Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Eisenberg. Yes. Very good. Any other business to come before the board this evening? Seeing none. We'll go to public privilege. If you'd like to speak on a town matter, please raise your hand. We'll ask that you come forward. State your name and address for the record, and please keep the five minutes or less. John, did you have your hand up? How are we doing? It's uh, me again. I just Thanks forgot. Again. I wanted to mention that sure. the, the Groom's Tavern uh, will be open Saturdays during the month of June from... 1 to 3 o'clock, staffed by volunteers from the Friends, so that if people had not, have not had an opportunity to see the tavern, that would be a good time uh, to do that. And what's the time on that again? It's uh, Saturdays in June from 1 to 3. 1 to 3, Saturdays in June. Very good. And the other thing I wanted to mention is the fact that uh, a week from this Saturday on May 19th, our town is having its first annual Hamlet History uh -huh. Hop, yes, right. and this year is featuring Fisher Ferry, and uh, we're going to have uh, uh, antique automobiles, antique firefighting equipment, hayride wagons down to Lock 19, we're celebrating the canal, and uh, so people might want to mark their calendars, there's also exhibits in the firehouse, but things will be centering, centering around uh, Fisher Ferry this year, and we'll probably move to another Hamlet next year. Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a new concept, you know, we've had historic uh, appreciation days and open space appreciation days uh, since we've made such great strides in uh, both of those initiatives, and this is something new we're trying with the Hamlet Hop, as, uh, as John mentioned, down at Bishop Ferry. A lot of history of the town down at Bishop Ferry, and if, if you ever get a chance to check out Clute's Dry Dock, and you can get to there, there's a little parking area right off Riverview Road, not far from where the Whipple Bridge is. Um, that's an, it's an incredible area, and there's a lot of history there. There was a little town there at one time. Uh, we'll be rebuilding you never canal, know it now. We'll be rebuilding the canal bridge that was there. Right. The town has the grant to do that, so that's right. going to happen this summer, I think. Yeah, I expect it will. Yeah. So between that and the uh, the large trail that we constructed uh, in partnership with the town of Half Moon, which was grant funded, you can go from the Whipple Bridge and all the way down to under the Twin Bridges. That's where the trail ends. You just look up and 
wind bridges are right there. So, uh, just a wonderful area, a lot of history, a lot of beautiful nature, and uh, we invite you to come down and enjoy it. Uh, anyone else? Yes, Beverly, how are you? Back again. Yeah, what's new? Let's see. Let's see here. Okay. Uh, my agenda seems minor, but I think it's a plus for Clifton Park. Mm -hmm. I've been investigating what other towns allow when it comes to hens, no roosters. Mm, no roosters. No. Uh, the town of Colony, since 214, mm -hmm. has allowed one to six chickens, no roosters, but you have to follow their rules and regulations, mm -hmm. which are strong and to the point, and it's worked well. Uh, I would be satisfied if you let us have two hens. Okay. Mm. I thought it was, I thought if it was rezoned, rezoned for hens, I was going to the superintendent of schools, Shenmue schools, and to see if two hens and maybe have an aquarium of fish, turtle, frog, birds so much, mm. so the children can have the opportunity to interact with live farm animals instead of a book or TV. In some apartments, they won't allow any kinds of pets. One apartment in Round Lake won't even allow an aquarium. Mm. Um, okay. I own 20 acres in Clifton Park, so I can have all the animals I want, but I'm 80 years old and a widow, so I'm not doing this for myself. I'm trying to do this for the younger family with children in Clifton Park, who will never have the money to buy or even find five acres in Clifton Park. I do recommend the town <coughs> when it has a festival of local farms in our area and see how excited the children get to see a live farm animal. Um, there's over 30,000 people in Clifton Park that might get upset about hens. So I went to the town of Colony and I talked to the clerk in the animal control. They have a population of 85,000, and they have 10,000 dogs. They get hundreds of calls about dogs causing problems. I asked him, what about your hens? And he said they had one call since 214. One hen got loose. I asked him, <laughs> yeah, one. <laughs> loose hen. Get, I asked, get off its collar? Or a hen pet husband. <laughs> <laughs> a hen pet husband, okay? <laughs> One hen got loose, the man forgot to close the door. I asked him how many people have hens. They told me they didn't know the exact number, but it was very, very low, because they only had one call since 214. Mm. Clifton Park has a population of about 36,000, and you have 4,000 dogs, with an average of 500 dogs a year being added. So by the statistics, having one to six hens, having no problems compared to having dogs, Hens are a terrific benefit to the community. They help eradicate ticks that cause Lyme disease, plus other insects. So less pesticides are used in the environment. You get organic organic eggs and fertilizer, and they are great pets. And uh, I thank you for all your work. And I gave you the rules here that the town colony has. And they allow it in single family residential districts, uh, one home, and it has to be single family from one to six chickens, no roosters. Uh, you can't use them commercially. Uh, no chicken waste can be mulched on the site. Chicken feed must be stored, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Um, the coops have to be fully enclosed, runs at all times. Chicken coops runs must be constructed that the chickens cannot fly over any fence and go into anybody else's yards. They have to be constructed according to the local and state building standards. Building permits must be obtained. Chicken coops can be no longer than 20 square feet. Chicken coops and runs are not permitted in the front or side yards. No more than one coop in one run. Chicken coops and chicken runs shall be located 15 feet from uh, anybody else's property. Are these colonies rules? Yeah. Oh. 
All right, well, I think, I think we got yeah, to I'm you. Yeah, I'm asking you. So, you know, um, am I 20 acres? I used to tell the children to go play and, you know, give them the leaves and stuff. Mm -hmm. But now we have to dress up like the military because there's so many ticks. And my son has Lyme disease, and it went to his heart. And he still suffers from that. So, you know, uh, chicken loves ticks. Ticks hate chickens. So, it may help. So, I'd appreciate it. How many people came here for chickens? Really? Thank you for coming. Thank you. <laughs> Very good. Thank you. Um, I know um, currently you need five acres to have animals like chickens. Five acres five-acre piece of property in the town of Clifton Park, and I can remember at least two, maybe maybe you have dealt with more, and I can remember at least two instances over the last several years where uh, people in residential areas uh, had chickens, and uh, the neighbors weren't too happy about it, and called, called me or emailed me the one, and, and we asked... Um, code folks to check it out and they did indeed have chickens and were asked, you know, shown the law and said, gee, you gotta unfortunately have to uh, remove the, uh, the chickens from the property. I don't know if you can remember any others, Steve. Uh, those, no, there were only two that I can remember on half-acre lots. Yeah, it's, been, it's been very few that, uh, you know, complaints about it. Mm -hmm. People call first and ask. Yeah. And then once they tell them that, it's the end of it. Right. Yeah, I think these were just people that you know didn't realize that it that it was against the code. I'm sure they didn't do it maliciously, but um, and that's really been our experience with it, you know. Uh, but um, so I, you know, I, I have no doubt there's definitely uh, a segment of the population that would be very interested in, in having these pets for different reasons, uh, and I'm sure there's also a segment of the population that would be very much against it, because they, for whatever reason, would not want um, animals like this living next to them in a residential area where you might have a half acre or less. So, um, so you know, before we, we were to change any, any law or implement a new law, that um, may affect 37,000 people, you know, we're, we're certainly going to give it careful consideration and review, review it, um, you know, review it over a period of time. So, uh, but I appreciate you coming here tonight and uh, also sending us uh, information about uh, having these pets. Anyone else that would like to speak on a town matter? Any other comments from the board? Motion to adjourn. Second by Mr. Whalen. Councilor Whalen. Yes. Councilor Sandor. Yes. Councilor Romano. Yes. Councilor Longwood. Yes. Thank you.